Hello and welcome back to our DCOM tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about tasks and the task list. We are going to be um, getting into some more complicated topics and how we can accomplish some more complicated things in our game. So what are tasks? At their most basic level, a task is just a struct in the game's code and inside the struct it has some important fields. It has a function field that holds the task function that handles the main logic of the task as we're iterating through it it's active or not, we have some uh, variables, some fields related to its positioning in the linked list of tasks. Um, we have a G tasks uh, list that holds all of our tasks, our current active tasks. There can be up to 16 of them. Um, it has a priority and then it has a data field. The data field is uh, important because um, you know a lot of the time we want to store data in the tasks since the tasks operate over multiple frames and the context can be lost from the functions. Um, and this, the data field just lets us easily store data um, related to our tasks inside of the task struct so that every time we are iterating through um, one of our tasks functions each frame we can access some data that gets changed without having to worry about anything complicated. Um, so as you see here's the G tasks uh, list that's just going to be a list of structs. Um, but anyway, we are going to jump, we're going to look at these three functions real quick. So we have destroy task, create task, reset task, we also have run tasks. These functions are going to be some of the more common ones that you see when we are talking about tasks, especially create task and destroy task. Run tasks is going to be very important to the to how the tasks actually run and their like you know their existence, reset tasks is something you have to be aware of um, if you are wanting tasks to run in certain contexts across contexts. So wanting tasks to run like um, from the overworld into the bag into a wild battle and you don't want it to stop, then you're gonna have to be aware of reset tasks because when it's called, it resets the task list wipes it all to zero and uh, obviously if you don't want your task to be deleted then you have to do something about this. But anyway we're getting ahead of ourselves. We are going to um, briefly look at task C so that we can see some of the functions that are here. The reset task this is just it just sets them all to false, gives them task dummy and then wipes them out to zero. Um, create tasks it puts the function that we give the task function as the task function assigns it the priority, inserts the task into the task list, which sets its, uh, you know, the variables related to the linked list location. It mem sets it back to zero again, just so that the data section is zero to start with. And then it tells the game that the, the, the task is active. So it says, next time you're running tasks, this is a task that you should run through. You should run the task function. So insert task, that's not anything we really need to look into, but it's just inserting the task into the list. Um, into the next available part of the list. Destroy task, it's taking the task that we are trying to destroy and it is setting it to active or setting it to false and getting rid of it. So run tasks is a very important function and this is run in the main game loop. So we have, I'm not gonna get too into it in this video because this video is about tasks, but the main game loop is running through these CB1 and CB2, these two callbacks. And inside of these callbacks, um, depending on where you are in the game, like in the overworld, we have our CB2 overworld, it's running this overworld basic function every frame, and this function, it runs any script, like if you click on a, you know, you click on something, it's going to run the script, um, it's going to then run through all the tasks every frame, so this run task is going to find all the active tasks in that list in order, and it's going to execute their task function once every single frame. And this behavior is very important to us. Uh, it allows us to control the flow of more complicated, uh, like multiple frame animations, uh, anything that you need to do asynchronously, you can't do like in just the script running all at once. Like if you need something to happen asynchronously, a lot of the time, unless you're, you know, you can do some map script stuff when you're inside the overworld, but when you're not inside the overworld, that's not an option. But this run tasks runs through the list of tasks and executes the task function every single frame in order. And then when it's done, it continues on. It goes animates, camera updates, puts all the stuff into, you know, the game's location so that the next time when the V-blank comes around, the, the game is ready to restart all over again and start drawing the screen while it's calculating the stuff for the next frame. So 
we are running these tasks every frame and you know that is how we are going to accomplish these more complicated setups. So I'm going to be opening the fieldeffects.c file because this has a lot of tasks that are used in the game um, for various things. Um, now the you know these tasks are overworld tasks for the most part so you know they're not the end all be all of tasks but uh, they provide us a nice starting point to look at how tasks uh, how tasks work so to start with this field effect is called through our script code when we use dive in the f in the field this function is getting called and it's going to be setting up the task for us but this is called through a field effect you can call the this uh, you know the create task you can call this stuff from the C code anywhere you can make your own you know special to call it from the, the script if you want it doesn't matter um, all that really matters is that the task gets added. It doesn't really matter the context that the task is added because the task context is going to be separate. It's going to be running whenever that run tasks function is called. Um, so we just create a task. We, we need a, a U8 for the task ID. We create the task, create task, task use dive, which is going to be our task function, which is here, our task function. Um, and then our priority, which is this, this is just the last priority, and then we keep going. So here, this is the data section that we were talking about, dot data 15, dot data 14, it could be dot data 2 or dot data 5, it doesn't matter. These field effect arguments come from the script code, um, so they're not that important to what we're talking about right now. But then this task use dive is ran with the task ID as the, uh, you know, the argument. Um, now you don't have to run this task use dive here. If we if we just returned, then the next frame this task would run because we've already added it. We've already created a task, so it's added to the task list. It's set to active, but when we are using this field effect, we want it to run the same frame that we start the task. We want to start the task and then start it immediately. We don't want it to wait a whole frame and come back. So we can just call the function directly inside of this after we've created it. Um, you know, you don't have to do that, you can delete it. But anyway, we move on, this is the task itself. The task here, it has the dive field effects funks list, which if we look up, we can see here is this list of functions, dive field effect init, dive show mon, dive of try warp. These are three functions um, and we have, and they're all in a list together. So if we index this list at zero, it pulls out this function in it. If we index it at one, it pulls out showman. If we index it at two, it pulls out try warp. So when we're looking at this task function, this is our main task function, and this is how a lot of them look. It is taking this list of functions, and then it is taking our task itself. This is G task, so this is all of the tasks, and then the task ID the task ID is going to pull out our specific task, so this gets replaced with our task, and then the dot data zero. So this dot data zero, we are just storing the state of the task in. So we're plus plusing it as we go through these functions. So it's going to start at zero, and we're going to index this first one in it. So das data data dot zero data zero is in it at first, and, and then it's going to run it with g task g task id as the argument. So that's just this right here is this. We're putting this in these parentheses mean we're calling this function. So we're calling the function that we're pulling from this access from this list. So we're accessing a list of functions and then we're calling it with this argument of the task itself um, or a pointer to the task itself. But when we, um, you know, when we increment data.0 next time this runs, next frame when the run task goes back around, data dot data zero is going to be a different value so instead of pulling the zeroth um, function it's going to pull the first function or the second function or the third function and that is how we handle um you know these m complex scripts across multiple frames without having a million different you know conditional statements is we can break it up into multiple sections multiple functions and then when we're done with one we increase the state so that it moves on to the next function um, so as we see here, the init, all it does is stop the player from being able to move and plus plus is the state of the, uh, the task, so we just move on to the next one. So now we're in die field effect showman. And here we do obviously some more complicated stuff. We lock player field controls, we set a field effect argument to be this, 
and then we start another field effect. Field effect move Shomon in it, which this field effect, it just shows the Pokemon on screen when it's like, this Pokemon used dive. Um, so this is starting a whole nother task. This is a separate task and it looks just like this one. I mean, it might be a little different, but it looks just like this one and it's asynchronous so that we can, we can use these tasks together and you'll see that in just a second. So we plus plus, so we're adding the state and now we're going to be in this die field effect. So how are we going to handle this asynchronously? If this is running every single frame, this whole thing should just be running. Um, and you know, if we're trying to warp out, how are we going to wait until the other task is done? Well, it's pretty easy. We just need one conditional and it can be a number of things. You could have just a flag and you could have it, uh, keep ignoring this until, um, until that flag is set. And then when the flag is set, then we're going to run what's inside the conditional. You can use this function that we have here since we're specifically talking about a field effect We're trying to wait until a field effect is done We can run field effect active list contains and then the name of the field effect Which is just gonna be is this field effect currently active? Yes or no? No, it's not currently active then we run this yes It is still going if it's still going we just return false We just skip all this and return false, but since we haven't plus plus in this part of the task, we haven't added to the state. This is just going to keep running. Every single frame, this function is going to run until this is done. Until this is true, this statement is true, this is going to keep running. And that's how we handle this asynchronous disconnect between the one task that's creating the, the, the picture of the mod that's popping up and the original task that's trying to actually warp you and handle the main logic behind the dive. So here inside of this you know obviously it's just true try to do dive warp which is just a function related to this you know i'm not going to get into the specifics of the diving and then we destroy the task which we talked about uh, briefly from task.c and task.h all it does is it finds the task and takes it out of the list it deactivates it we can use this function find task id by func and we can pass it the task function and it'll handle it for us which is nice um, or you can, if you have the task ID, you can just give it the task itself. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we want to remove the field effect active list, uh, because this is a field effect, but if you're not actually creating a field effect, that doesn't matter. But if you do do a task through a field effect, you want to make sure to remove the field effect. Um, and that's, that's what happens when the field effect move showmon is done is it removes it like this in its last, in its, in its, the ending function of its task. And then when we call this field effect active list remove on this one, that's when this function is executed. So when this is done on the other one, this whole thing gets finished and then the warp happens and, and dive happens. It's pretty simple. Um, so we are going to look briefly, I think at one more, um, yeah, let's look at this fly one as well, this fly task before um, we wrap up. So this fly one, we are going to be using um, defines for our data section, which is really nice. Um, it keeps the code a lot cleaner so we can actually define T state is equal to data zero. So that way here, all we have to do is type T state and it makes it a lot you know, more clear, cleaner. T state plus plus, we're just adding plus we're just adding one to the state. We're just moving through this list of functions. This one has a lot more functions in it. Um, and as you might see, this one, the main, this is the main task function, the create task, task fly out, and here's task fly out. Um, it doesn't have the, it doesn't run the task immediately after we call it, it waits till the next frame. But also here, it doesn't have a while. And you're like, why doesn't it have a while? The other one had a while. Well, um, in the other one, if we wanted to, we could run a task, a task function multiple times in the same frame. Uh, how I said it runs once every single frame. Well, normally it run, runs once every single frame. This one will run once every single frame, no matter what, we can't make it run twice in a frame. Um, but the other one with the while loop, if we returned true, um, it would, the while loop would still be going. So let's actually go back and look at that. What was, what were we looking at? It was the dive. Uh, um, task use dive. So here, this while loop, if we were, so when we return false, this while loop is false. So it just ends. But if we return true here, 
it's going it's running this first function runs the function runs the function it returns true so then it's going back again into the while loop if it returns true it goes back again into the while loop if it returns true it goes back again into the while loop because the while loop is true so it's going to keep executing this function over and over and over and over and over again and if you never return false your game is going to hang like it's not going to work obviously you don't want to do that but if for some reason you want a task to keep running you want it to keep doing something um, without going over multiple frames you add this while loop to the the task like you know function list surrounding it encapsulating it so that you can return true or you can return false and you can decide whether or not that you want to do um you know to execute things multiple times in one frame uh, but you have to obviously again be careful when you are doing that to make sure that you aren't hanging your game so here we don't have the while loop so this is just going to execute once when this task gets run this task function in our run tasks function um, from the the main callback from um, the overworld we are you know it just runs it just goes into this code and it's like okay well we're pulling out this function and then we're running it and we execute it once and then the end of the code is the end of the code and we just return and that's all that happens so it happens once and that's it so now the rest of this code is similar it's a little bit more complicated of a, t of a task because flying out is a little bit more complicated i'll go over a little bit briefly so to start with object event is movement overridden object event clear held movement is finished this is just making sure that we are standing still after you know so that we can start our field move pose so then we t task t avatar flags we set this just some random you know no, i mean they're not random we set uh, um data related to the state of the player uh, um so that you know when we when we're dealing with the task itself we uh we have we have we have references to what is what it, what was going on before we ran the task we set the player avatar state to be on foot we set player avatar field move and then we set the object event set held motion mo movement um movement action start anim in direction this is just the movement action that we need to start anytime we want to run an animation on the like the player avatar um so that is just happening there in this next section if object event clear held movement is finished so this is actually going to be waiting it's going to be waiting until this field move uh, animation is done so it's going to keep going and going and going and going and then when it's done then when this animation is done um async you know we are going to jump into this code it's going to be finished so we are going to plus the state finally we are going to set a field effect argument for the mon id for the mon that we knew that you know we pulled out from earlier that knows fly um that's actually from the script probably if that starts the initial field effect and then we're going to start another field effect and again this is the one we talked about brief you know before where we're just showing the picture of the mon and it's like this mon is using surf blah 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 sorry but anyway um and then after that we are going to move on to the next one so if field effect active list contains so this is just waiting until this is done and then it's going to start executing this um and it has some stuff here obviously to deal with the surf blob um it creates the flybird sprite that is going to swoop down um it's going to plus the state it's going to you know do all of the bird stuff i'm not going to keep going through this but you can read this task stuff it's obviously pretty complicated some of it but um when you get to the end we are just going to again remove the field effect and destroy the task and that's all that you really need to know for the task obviously you know i skimmed over a lot of this but it's not important the actual content of this particular task the thing that's important is the overall context of the task system itself and how it works and i hope that i have at least illuminated some of it for you it can definitely be a bit of a more complicated topic um, but at the end of the day it is extremely versatile and we can do a lot of things with it like in my game i have particularly um a lot of tasks Let's see if i can get this to come up 
Um, I have th these songs that I do. Um, I have the sound turned off, but it's actually playing the Song of Storms. And this animation is obviously done through a task, um, and it's done asynchronously. It's also handled through code or through scripting. So the script and the the task field effect are working in conjunction in conjunction with each other. Um, and uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I just wanted to use the bomb. So, and I also have the bomb, and it blows up, and nice. But anyway, um, those tasks uh, that I use are, you know, just like this. They're actually in this file down at the bottom um, of, you know, my repo. the The task system is great, uh, and if you can, uh, if you can learn to understand it, you will have no problem doing a lot more complicated things, like the the animations in the game that are, you know, the more intense animations that aren't just the overworld um, cutscenes just involving the overworld characters, but like the Rayquaza scene fight and things like that, those are all done through tasks. And the only way you're going to mimic that is if you learn how to deal with the task system. So very important topic. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment in the Discord or under the video. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one.